This is the second part of the electric current and electric circuits lesson. It contains all the theoretical parts that are away from the rules and the mathematical equations. We will give the definition of the electric current. We will know what electric current can do. Then two types of electric current, AC and DC. Then an important widely used circuit component, the variable resistor. Some electric symbols we must know in the syllabus. We will know how we can practically prove Ohm's law, V equals IR, the most important rule for electric circuits. And finally, we will study the special connection of the variable resistor called the potentiometer. Let's start with the first title, the definition. Before we give the definition of the electric current, there is an important thing we have to know. What is moving inside the wire? The real things that move in the wire are the negatively charged electrons that move from the negative pole to positive pole of the battery. Nature of electricity is the flow of electrons repelled from the negative pole and attracted to the positive pole. But do you remember when we explained the concept of the electric current? The columns were shown as moving from positive to negative, not from negative to positive. Actually, this does not show the direction of the electrons. But scientists choose to introduce what they named the electric conventional current. This will be opposite to the direction of the electrons. Conventional current is what scientists decided to be the direction of electric current which is opposite to the direction of electrons, and it is from positive to negative. In this beginning level, we do not need to know too much about the nature of the conventional current. All we just need to know is that our current direction is taken from positive to negative. In all cases and lessons which will be discussed later, when applying any rule in electricity, the direction of the current is from positive to negative, not the direction of electrons. Another definition for electric current is the amount of charge passing per unit time. I equals Q over T. Effect of current Electric current can cause heating and lighting effect. Electric current can cause the filament of the bulb to heat up and glow. Electric current also causes magnetic effect. Electric current causes a magnetic field around the wire. Also, it can make an electromagnet. The electric current has a chemical effect. Electric current causes chemical changes to some compounds in a chemical reaction called electrolysis of ionic compounds. The next title is AC and DC. Electric current from a power supply can be one of two ways. The first way is that when columns flow in only one direction, as long as the circuit is closed, carrying electric energy from the supply and giving it to the lamp, and this is named direct current. Direct current flows in one direction, from positive to negative. Direct current is produced by cells and batteries, solar cells, and DC power supplies. The second way is AC or alternating current, and this, as you see, the current moves in opposite directions. This makes us say that alternating current flows in both directions. It's a current that has positive and negative values. Alternating current is produced by AC generators. <music> the 
the variable resistor. This picture shows a real variable resistor or a rheostat. The variable resistor's main part is the coil that is around an insulating cylinder. There is a slider that is in contact with the coil. The variable resistor is connected to the circuit as shown. One connection from the end indicated by number one, which is directly connected to the first end of the coil. The second connection is indicated by the connection number two. This is not the other end of the coil, this is just the slider. The common circuit symbol for the variable resistor is as shown. Now let's have a look on the current flow in the circuit with the slider in this position. The current is out of the positive through the connection wires, taking the turns of the coil before it goes into the slider and back to the negative. Now we will move the slider to a further position. The brightness of the bulb will decrease. The current will flow the same way from positive to negative. But for the new position of the slider, the current will flow in more turns of the wire to reach the slider and go to the negative to complete the cycle. This means longer wire, which also means higher resistance. So the current will be smaller and the brightness will decrease. This is another circuit symbol of the variable resistor that can show the approximate position of the slider of the variable resistor in the circuit. <music> Electric symbols 29 symbol for different circuit components we have to know to draw our circuits. Conductors crossing with no connection. Open switch. Closed switch. Open push switch. Closed push switch. This is the cell. A battery of cells. DC power supply. AC power supply. The ammeter. And this is the milliammeter. Voltmeter. The resistor. Variable resistor, heater, thermistor, light dependent resistor, relay, diode, light emitting diode, lamp, loudspeaker, microphone, electric bill, earth or ground, electric motor, the generator, fuse, and finally the transformer. Some of these symbols are familiar to us and some of them will be studied later in the coming lessons. Now it's time to verify and prove Ohm's law. Nearly the most important part in this lecture is how to practically prove Ohm's law. The mathematical form of Ohm's law is V equals IR. The voltage equals the current intensity in amperes multiplied the resistance in ohms. For simplicity, we can prove that the value of R equals V divided by I. This is also a rearrangement of Ohm's law. So let's construct our circuit. Bring a DC battery or supply, a known resistor, an ammeter, and a voltmeter. Connect them in the circuit as shown. This is our resistor. We can consider it for example 5 ohms. Note that the shown resistor is not 5 ohms, it's just to clarify. Switch on the circuit and simply take the reading of the voltmeter and the ammeter. The reading of the voltmeter is V and the reading of the ammeter is I. If we divide V by I, Surprisingly, the value will equal the value of the resistance R, which in our example is 5 ohms. This proves Ohm's law, which is V equals IR. This is the same circuit we used, but in symbols. The steps we did now include very important practical mistakes. This mistake is that we used a single pair of results. 
This pair of results is one current reading corresponding to one voltage reading. This is a practical mistake in physics. We have methods to improve the reliability of the results, like repeating and taking the average. The better than repeating the same experiment several times and taking the average is taking different values of V against I for the same resistor and draw a graph. How we will do this? Getting different values of V against I for the same resistor can be done by adding a variable resistor to the circuit in series with our fixed resistor. This shows the corresponding symbol of the circuit components. Connect the circuit as shown. Move the slider of the variable resistor to adjust the current. Take the corresponding reading on the ammeter and the voltmeter. Move the slider of the variable resistor again to readjust the current to a newer value and read the voltmeter and ammeter again. Repeat what you did several times and tabulate your results in a table. If we draw a graph of our results by putting the current on the x-axis, the voltage on the y-axis, plotting the points and drawing a line of best fit, we will get a straight line passing through the origin if we exclude the points out of the trend considering them as errors. If you studied the basic levels of mathematics, you must know that a general equation for a straight line passing through the origin is in the form of y equals mx, where m is the slope of the line. By comparing this with Ohm's law v equals ri, you will find that v corresponds to y, i corresponds to x, so the slope corresponds to r. So by calculating the slope of this line, you will find that the slope is numerically equal to the resistance r. The straight line passing through the origin means that the voltage is directly proportional to current for a fixed resistor, constant value. This also proves Ohm's law, but in a more reliable way. Ohm's law states that voltage, which is the potential difference, is directly proportional to the current for a fixed resistor of constant value. Note that for some reasons, it's found it will be Better to make the current I on the Y axis and the voltage V on the X axis. There is no problem. This makes the slope 1 over R instead of R. In this experiment, if we try to replace the fixed resistor with a bulb and follow the same steps, we will not get a straight line for the bulb with a constant slope. Instead, we will get a curve. The curve means that the slope is changing and not constant. The physical explanation for the difference between a straight line obtained by the fixed resistor and the curve obtained by the bulb is because as current increases, the filament heats up, causing more vibration of the atoms, so resistance increases. Finally, we can make another advantage of the circuit of proving Ohm's law in finding the value of an unknown fixed resistor. We can make it the easy way, which is less accurate, by reading V and I, then dividing V over I to get R, or the long way by using a variable resistor and taking many readings of V against I, then drawing the graph and calculating the slope to find the value of the unknown resistor R. The last part in this lecture is the potentiometer. Again back to the variable resistor. We connected the variable resistor to the circuit from two ends. The first end of the coil and the slider end. In this part, we are going to connect the variable resistor from three ends. The first end of the coil, the end of the slider and the second end of the coil. The two-way connection we studied before is used to increase the total resistance of the circuit. 
and hence decreases the total current. But the three-way connection is named the potentiometer. Potentiometer will not affect the current at all. Potentiometer varies the voltage across the voltmeter according to the position of the slider. Let's draw in the circuit symbol to simplify the case. Remember the three connections. The first end of the coil, the second end of the coil, and the slider end. Let us first study the case of the slider is exactly in the middle of the variable resistor. The slider here acts as if it divides the whole coil into two separate resistors connected in series. The blue resistor which is connected to the voltmeter and the red resistor which is out of the voltmeter. If we suppose for example a battery of 6 volts. According to what we studied before about the rules of the series connection, we will find that the two imaginary resistors are equal, so they will equally share the 6 volts, so each one acquires 3 volts. This means that the voltmeter which is across the blue one will read 3 volts. Actually, we can simply vary the voltage across the voltmeter by moving the slider. If we move the slider to this position, the blue imaginary resistor which is connected to the voltmeter is now the bigger one. So it has the bigger share of the voltage than the red one. Now it reads 4.5 volts by ratio. Moving the slider in this position will make the voltage across the voltmeter equals to the whole voltage of the battery 6 volts. Of course, we neglect the resistance of the connecting wires. This position again will read 4.5 volts. Here the reading will be 3 volts. In this case, the reading will be 1.5 volts. If the slider is here, the voltmeter will read 0. And again here, the voltage across the voltmeter will be 3 volts. This shows how we can vary the voltage across the voltmeter depending on the position of the slider of a variable resistor in a three-way connection. Finally, you must know that we can replace the voltmeter with any component or appliance to control its voltage. We can put a bulb, a heater, or anything. Here the voltage of the supply or the battery is named the input, and the voltage across the component after division is named the output. Let's remember again the titles we discussed today in this lecture, which is the second part of the electric current and electric circuits lesson, the theoretical part. Definitions, effect of current, AC and DC, variable resistors, electric symbols, proving Ohm's law, and finally the potential divider and the potentiometer. Power stations are the electric batteries of the country, as well as they are one of the main sources of air pollution. A power station has a connection to every single plug in the city. How is a power station connected to our homes? How does it feed our appliances with electric energy? What are the safety precautions to avoid being hurt from it? Wait for the next lesson. Home installation.